Hi everyone, it's Krista and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, hi again. So this is my channel. I love to do DIYs on a budget, Dollar Tree DIYs, thrift flips, farmhouse and rustic, wreaths and seasonal decor. So if you like what you see here, you know what to do. You just hit that red subscribe button. I would love to have you join. And also leave me a comment. I love to hear what you guys think and give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel. You can also see me on Instagram, Pinterest and TikTok. So you can follow me all those links will be down below. I also have a read shop. It's called Krista's Read Designs. If you want to check it out, it's an Etsy shop. Also, today is all about spring forward and our host is Crafty Hints and our co-host is Six Kids in a Glue Gun and Rustic and Lace DIYs. More about that in a minute, but first, DIY number one. So the first DIY, I'm taking one of these wood slices from the Dollar Tree and that, sign, that little wooden thing that says spring. <laughs> and I'm going to water down my white chalk paint by Waverly with a little bit of water and some paint. And all I do is mix it up in a little cup and then I just kind of brush it on with my brush and I'm trying not to go over the edges. I like that rustic wood look on these slices. I think they're so pretty. And you could do so much with these. So I'm just like brushing it on and it's kind of like gonna look like a white wash, basically, not just like just white paint. And that's what I was looking for because I kind of wanted some of that wood grain to still come through. Next, I'm gonna take this seashell pink color. It's a Felgar paint that I got at Hobby Lobby and I love this color for spring, it's so pretty. And I am just going to um, paint that little sign that says spring. And now I'm going to glue that with my hot glue in the center of my wood slice, like so. And then next, I am going to take some of these paper flowers that you could get at Hobby Lobby. These are paper studio ones. They're in near the scrapbooking section. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take a few out and they sometimes have these on sale for 40 or 50% off, I believe, for paper studio. But I actually got these when they were like orange stickered. So always go check because you never know when it's gonna happen. And I'm gonna just like bunch them up, one on the bottom and then a little bit on the top. And I did stick in a few of these really beautiful light um, green ones as well, just to kind of give it a different pop of color. And then I'm just gonna glue those down into place. This was a super simple DIY, so under budget and super fun to make. And I just love the way this turned out. I mean, these Dollar Tree signs that they're coming out with now in the Dollar Tree and in the craft section are like unbelievable. You guys definitely have to get them, pick them up when you see them. They have round ones, square ones, um, rect um, rectangle ones. I mean, they have every, you know, shape. So there you go. There it is. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And next this is all about spring forward and like i told you these are our hosts and our co-hosts there's a huge playlist so make sure you go check everyone out i will have everything everyone's links down in my description box along with the playlist so make sure you go check everyone out now diy number two this one was super fun too i love this one i got one of these little bird nests from actually from last year but they do have them this year at michael's and i'm also going to use that chipped a candlestick that you see there. I got that on um, clearance at Hobby Lobby. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take some of the Spanish moss and I'm going to kind of like um, put it around the top portion of the candlestick. And I'm just gonna kind of like bunch it together like so it stays on there nicely. We are gonna glue it down though um, to make sure it stays. And then I'm just gonna kinda put like a little nest in the middle like that and I'm just gonna nest that little bird in there. And this turned out so pretty, you guys. And this bird was the perfect color for these DIYs that I'm doing today. So I just took a lot of hot glue and what I did is I just glued it down. And now I'm gonna take some more hot glue and I'm gonna glue down that bird's nest to the center as well. But we're gonna make this even look more high end by adding some more things to it. So I did go around the edges cause you know, Spanish moss goes all over the place. So it kind of gets everywhere. So what I did is to make it look a little more uniformed, I just went in with my glue gun and I just kind of did the edges and then kind of pushed it down with my fingers. And I just kept doing that all around the edges just so it looks a little bit better and not so messy. 
Then next, I'm going to take some of these floral picks that I had in my stash, but they have them every year. You can get tons of floral picks at Dollar Tree. Tons of stuff is on sales. All kinds of spring flowers on sale right now at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. Just go check it out. Even Joann's um, has them too. And I'm just going to kind of go around and just kind of put them where I want them. You know, however you want it to look. You do you. <laughs> That's what I would say. You do you. So what I do is I just put a little glue on the ends and then I'm just going to stick those down so they stay in place. And this turns out so cute, you guys. And then next, I'm going to use my um, paper flowers again. So see, you can use these for a lot of things. So when you start with something, you know, pick out the paper flowers that you like. And you can just do so much with them. Now, I used to scrapbook, so I'm very into the paper flower look. And then next, I'm going to take some of those. And I am going to start gluing them to the edge, like sort of on the side, going up to the bird's nest. And I'm just going to kind of nestle them, keep going up, and just keep climbing up with different sizes, different colors that match. And I'm just going to keep going because there were these pale yellows in there and the greens and then this light pink color. And it just went well, went together so well. So I just kept doing that. And then I did put a few also on the top, around the nest, around the front of the nest, and then around the side and the back. Not too many because you don't want to overwhelm it. But I did a little bit at a time. But look at how pretty that looks. Like, I love it. And then again, like I said, I did on the side. And I also put, you know, like one in the back. And that's kind of really all I did. And it just turned out so pretty, you guys. You guys got to let me know what you think of this one. I love it. I think it's just so elegant. And here's your close-up of that one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. So now DIY number three. Now this one, I'm taking one of these wood bird houses from the Dollar Tree, some scrapbook paper that I had, and some of that light pink paint again, and some um, white paint, and some of those paper flowers again, and the same pick that I've been using. See those picks, you can use multi things, okay? So the first thing I did is I took my white Waverly chalk paint and I went over the roof and the bottom of my birdhouse. These birdhouses are so cute. I'm telling you, the Dollar Tree is really stepping it up this year. And this is that same pink, light pink color that we've been using. It's a seashell pink. And I'm just going to brush that in the front of the birdhouse as well. And then on the sides in the back, I'm going to use that scrapbook paper. Now, I have this scrapbook paper on hand, but you get scrapbook paper anywhere at any craft store. Or you can even purchase them on Amazon. So what I did is I just, you know, try to fold it to where I needed it. See how I'm just folding the paper? Sometimes that's how I do it and sometimes I trace. This was just much easier to do this way. And then I'm just using my little sponge brush and I'm gonna put on some Mod Podge and then I'm going to Mod Podge those scrapbook pieces down paper, down on my birdhouse. And this color paper just went like perfectly with the pink I was using and with everything else that I was making today. So it just happened to work out. And then I use my little iron and my parchment paper, and that's what makes it not bubble or get wrinkles when you do your scrap of paper. Now I'm using this vintage, it's um, a Distress Oxide by Tim Holtz. You can purchase these, like I said, in the scrapbooking section at Hobby Lobby. I, you can use a paintbrush to do this. You don't have to use that little spongy dauber thing that I'm using. See how I'm using the paintbrush? I'm showing you like different ways that you can use this. And what it does is it distresses the edges of your stuff. And I love using these ink pads. So it is Distress Oxide. It's by Tim Holtz. I'll have it listed in my description box down below so you guys don't forget the name of it. So you can look for it if you want to use it or try it out. But this is Vintage Photo and it's very vintage. I love it. And it just makes the house look a little bit old. And see how I'm going in with different stencil brushes and I'm doing like a light brush just to make the birdhouse look a little aged and a little worn. I love that look. I love the rustic uh, look. And there it is, you guys. Didn't it come out so pretty? I love it. And then I did also do the front of it too, just a little bit. And I'm going very lightly with my brush, very, very lightly. And then next, I'm going to use some of those paper flowers again. And I am going to cover up that one flower in the front there. 
I just wanted a real flower, like something that looked more realistic. So what I did is I just took one of these and I happened to have the perfect color of those flowers and I stuck it on the front. And now I'm gonna take some more of that pick that we've been using, same one. See how much you can get out of one pick? Very, you can get a lot, a lot of DIYs. This is three now that we've used it. And then all I'm gonna do is I am going to just glue on the top, kind of wherever I want it. Um, and you could either hang this up or put it as a shelf sitter. I mean, however you want to display it. But this turned out so pretty too. And I'm so happy with these DIYs, but I am loving this light pink color that I found. Um, that paint, it's just, I don't know. I just really like it. And I'm not a real big pink person, but this pink I really like because it's so pale, so spring looking, so pretty. And then I put all like a white flower with a little bit of yellow because you can see inside the little buds there that I'm putting on the top of the greenery. You can see there's some of that yellow, pale yellow with the pink and these flowers just went absolutely perfect. And they still sell these flowers because I've looked. So they still have these at Hobby Lobby. You can purchase them. But I would wait till they're 40% off or 50% off of Paper Studio. And there you go, you guys. Isn't it cute? Oh, such a cute beer house. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to put a little bit of that greenery on the bottom as well, just to kind of tie it all together and then stick one of those flowers in the center. And that is it for this cute little birdhouse. Guys, let me know what you think. I absolutely love this one too. It turned out so, so cute. So now our last one is DIY number four. This one, I actually got this off of Pinterest. I'm gonna use one of these houses like from last year, <laughs> but they have houses all the time at the Dollar Tree Wooden Houses. So you can pick one of those up. I'm using some Scrabble tiles, those birds, those laser cut birds, some more of that scrapbook paper. And I'm just going to scrape off that middle thing, but you know, you do what you gotta do with your bird, with your houses, you know, take off what you need. But this one was really easy to take off the roof. Just be really careful because I have broken quite a few trying to do that. So just be really careful. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace the house and we're going to put this scrapbook paper again, the same scrapbook paper <laughs> over the top of the house. Um, and this turns out super cute too. But I saw this on Pinterest and I was like, wow, that's so adorable. And it's very rustic looking and I love that. So next I just use my Bob Podge like before and I'm just going to glue that down make sure it's nice and flat and that's not bubbling. I'm going to use my parchment paper again and my little iron to make sure that stays um, down and it doesn't bubble. And then I'm going to use my little finger sander and I am going to sand off any of the excess. Just make sure when you're sanding, you're sanding away from you, not towards you because you'll whip the paper. And wait till that Mod Podge dries. Then I'm just going to glue my roof back on. I didn't need to paint it because I like that dark brown color and it looks really good with the yellow i mean yellow pink now i'm going to use that vintage again um distress oxide stamp ink, ink and i am going to distress the edges again so i'm just going around all the edges making it look a little worn and look oh so pretty now we're going to take some of that jute twine that you can get at the dollar tree and i am going to cut it and what I did is I folded a piece in half and I cut one piece a little bit shorter on the one end. Then I took another piece and cut that. Now what I'm doing is I'm just unwinding, I guess you could call it, the jute twine because there's like three pieces. And I want the edges to look frayed and open like a branch on a tree. And that's what I was going for here. So that's what I did. And then um, once I got those all undone, on the edges, I'm going to glue these down and make it look like there's branches coming out the side there of this little house. And, oh my God, this was such a great idea. I love this idea on Pinterest. And um, I can't remember who it was though, but I've seen a few of these on Pinterest, so. And then I'm just gluing it down. And I am going along the edges because I just want to make sure they stay down, but I'm not gluing the ends because I want those to kind of you know, look a little realistic, so kind of sticking out. And I just went along the ends there and just make sure they stay down. And then once I got those down, we're gonna take some of those laser cut birds and I'm gonna use two of them and I'm going to put them on my house. So the first one I'm gonna put up top there and then I'm gonna put another one you'll see in a minute 
all the way over to the side just so it looks like they're landing on the branches or going to land on the branches I guess and I just made sure it's glued down really really good just hold it there for a minute and then I'm going to take some of my raffia and I'm going to use the neutral color the regular raffia and I'm just going to bunch it up a couple times I just fold it in half bunch it up and we're going to make a little decorative little thing on the top of the roof so I had this little piece of greenery I it just was in my stash I'm just going to glue that down first like so and then next I'm going to glue down that raffia on top of that and then I'm going to take one of those paper flowers again and I'm going to stick that in the center of my raffia isn't that cute look at it oh so cute so rustic so pretty for spring and now I'm just going to spell out spring with my scrabble tile pieces and I just make sure you know that I get them the right way because <laughs> I always mess that up but it's okay because if you do you can always pop these off I don't know I pop them off and I don't rip the paper so don't take me for you know real because I it might rip but mine never rips so I just pop it off if I don't get it straight but yeah that's my only struggle is getting things straight <laughs> so once I get those all glued down it says spring and that's it you guys there is my little birdhouse. Isn't it cute? I love the way it turned out. So make sure you go check everyone out. I will have everything down below in the description box. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember, stay crafty. Bye.